This grid represents an array of 64 electrodes. The height of each intersection of the grid represents the potential at a point on the surface of the brain. The potential is amplified by one of 64 preamplifiers, measured at intervals of about one millisecond, multiplexed, and stored on magnetic tape for computer display. The electrical activity shown here was recorded from the olfactory bulb and cortex in cats. We begin with conventional techniques using implanted electrodes. Electrodes are placed for bipolar recording across the dipole field in the olfactory bulb and the dipole field in the olfactory cortex. The electrical activity consists of bursts of sine waves at approximately 40 cycles per second. Each burst occurs during inspiration. It is superimposed on a low frequency oscillation which is synchronous with the respiratory cycle. The peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the activity ranges up to several hundred microvolts. The recording electrode arrays are placed under anesthesia. The skin and soft tissues are reflected and the contents of the orbit are removed. The medial wall of the orbit is resected and the dura covering the olfactory bulb and cortex is removed. The bulb measures approximately one centimeter from dorsal to ventral poles. The white area is the lateral olfactory tract on the cortex. Electrodes in arrays are placed on the surface of the bulb or on the surface of the olfactory cortex. The arrays are four by seven millimeters, three and a half by three and a half millimeters, and two by two millimeters with 300 microns spacing between each pair of platinum iridium wires. The diameters are 80 microns. We begin by observing bulbar responses to electrical stimulation. Same single shock evoked potentials are indicated by the tick marks on the lower traces. Sets of evoked responses are averaged to give an averaged evoked potential. Here is the baseline segment, the st shock artifact, the presynaptic action potential from the primary olfactory nerve, the initial surface negative peak of the evoked potential, followed by a sequence of oscillatory peaks of potential superimposed on a surface negative baseline shift. The surface distribution is recorded with a two by two millimeter array and stimulation is given monopolarly to the olfactory nerve. The direction of propagation is indicated by the arrows. The baseline segment is followed by the shock artifact, the action potential, and the initial peak of the average evoked potential. The potential is sampled at each electrode 100 times. 100 graphs of potential are drawn by a computer and the graphs are photographed on 16 millimeter film by means of animation techniques. The calibration mark is 100 microvolts. The direction of propagation is again indicated by arrows. The baseline segment is followed by the shock artifact and then by the presynaptic action potential and the peak of the evoked potential. The oscillation appears to be restricted so the region of initial activation of the bulb and does not spread outwardly. It decays in the form of a damped sine wave, which has the same frequency in all regions of the active focus. Here the activity has been slowed by a factor of 800 times. In subsequent sequences, the activity is slowed by a factor of 200 times. Next, we compare the surface distribution of the evoked potentials on the olfactory bulb with the surface distributions of evoked potentials on the pre-piriform or primary olfactory cortex. A set of average evoked potentials is shown for representative points on the surface. On the left, the olfactory bulb shows a systematic delay in the onset of evoked responses across the surface. But once the response is established, there is a constant frequency and constant phase across the focus. On the right, 
for the cortex, there is a systematic delay in onset, which is preserved in the form of a phase shift across the active focus. Moreover, there are multiple frequencies in different parts of the olfactory cortex on single shock stimulation. The stimulus is given to the primary olfactory nerve in the olfactory mucosa. Following the pre-stimulus baseline segment and the shock artifact, the response begins at the anterior part of the bulb and spreads to the posterior part. Thereafter, the oscillation persists within the region of initial activation. It does not spread outwardly like waves in water, but dies in situ. The recordings are made from the olfactory cortex on stimulation of the lateral olfactory tract. The direction of propagation is indicated by the arrows. The shock artifact is followed by the rapid development of an oscillatory field of potential over the whole surface of the cortex. This field undergoes oscillation at different frequencies in different parts of the cortex. The response is not coherent and tends to break up into small local regions of activity. Next, we will observe patterns of spontaneous or background electrical activity recorded from the bulb and from the cortex. The pattern under anesthesia shows small bursts of activity at approximately 40 to 60 cycles per second. The recording period lasts approximately one-tenth of a second. Therefore, the display is restricted to the duration of a short burst or to a part of one burst consisting of several cycles of oscillation. The activity is recorded from a 2 by 2 millimeter array without stimulation. In this small region, there is widespread coherence in contrast to the response on single shock stimulation. This implies that the driving input for the EEG is more broadly distributed than is the input on electrical stimulation. The three and a half by three and a half millimeter array shows coherent activity, which is maximal toward the center of the array and which diminishes towards the margins of the array. The display shows the location and size of an active focus, which occupies a limited region of the lateral wall of the bulb. The larger electrode array is four by seven millimeters and covers most of the lateral surface of the bulb. There is a lesser degree of coherence of activity on the surface. It is likely that there are two or more active foci in the bulb and that the surface activity is a reflection of multiple coherent domains. In the cortex, there is oscillatory activity which occupies the whole surface, usually at a common frequency. Often, there is the appearance of a phase lag which runs from the anterior part of the cortex to the posterior part of the cortex. In other instances, there is a phase lag in the reverse direction. These phase lags probably depend on the direction of propagation of input axons and do not reflect cell-to-cell -cell transmission within the cortex. Note that the peak occurs first in the posterior part and then in the anterior part, giving the illusion of a propagated wave. The pulse trains generated by single neurons in the olfactory bulb and cortex are closely related to the EEGs generated by these two structures. In particular, the probability of firing of single neurons oscillates at the same frequency as the EEG. But the amplitude and phase of these oscillations in pulse probability differ 
for the neurons in different parts of the bulb. The structure or spatial grain of this activity is much finer than the grain of spatial activity revealed in the surface distributions of the evoked potentials or the EEG. Therefore, the surface recordings of the spontaneous and evoked potentials have limited value. They suffice to demonstrate the existence of active or cooperative domains, their locations, the frequencies at which they oscillate, the limits of their spatial extent, their durations in time, and whether they move with respect to the surface. But these surface recordings do not reveal the complex texture which exists within these cooperative foci. The neural signals evoked by sensory stimulation with odors are carried by large numbers of neurons. The value of these techniques for a spatial display of the EEG will be enhanced when the techniques have been extended to recording from waking animals. It can be anticipated that the EEG will provide two kinds of information. The first is related to the spatial distribution of neurons, which are processing particular signals, and the second is the nature of the dynamics of the interactions among neurons, which are reflected in the EEG.